Hey, Von Kameen, Jeff here again, and we are going to look at some of the other records that I found at the store that I mentioned in my previous video where I found the Don Dockin uh, German pressing. There were a couple other things I picked up that were just miscellanies that, uh, you know, he had there that I went ahead and grabbed. Um, so I wanted to show those. Um, these are kind of more just hole fillers. Uh, it, in particular, these first, uh, these two that I'm showing uh, are... A band that I kind of dabbled in a little bit before, don't know a ton about, have heard their name around town, <laughs> you know, I've heard their name around over the years, and so I uh, had decided to go ahead and grab some more, and that's the band Legs Diamond with Firepower, so I have this. Um, this is their 1979 album, and so, well, real briefly, a couple years ago I picked up Hard as a Diamond is a Hard Rock. This is their 1977 album. And I got to admit, I found it kind of, you know, not as impressive as I had in my mind that they would be. Just generic 70s rock. Wasn't bad, but it wasn't something I'm like, oh, I got to run out and, and pick up everything by them. Um, and so they have an album that came out before this, their first album. I saw that in the store not terribly long ago, within a couple months. And I was kind of like, eh, I just, I didn't buy it. Um, because this album was, it, you know, like I said, it was good, but it wasn't, you know, anything to write home about. But when I got there and they had this and the next one, I thought, you know, and so I went ahead and pulled them back up on my phone real quick and I listened to them to remind myself uh, about them and to listen to these other ones. And I thought, wow, yeah, these are actually quite right there in, in, a, in a sweet spot of, of the rock and roll. So the first, the second album there, I guess was is is you know it sounds like an album from the seventies. I guess it's got that right. This I, I was hearing it was a little more beefed up. I'm like okay, they're they're changing a little bit there. So I went ahead and grabbed this. And of course, it's an OG press, and and they plus they even look a little more. You can't really see it, but a little more snazzy rock like there. And again, the album was in great condition. So I thought okay, I'm gonna grab that, and the price was right. And then I grabbed out of out on bail. This is our 1984 album. And so when I went online and listened to this, I'm like, okay, now they're really, they've got a real 80s hard rocking sound of the day. So that's why I decided to get this and I grabbed that one too. That I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is definitely, they're shaping up really well. Um, and so I did go ahead and grab this. Again, it was in great condition. It's a nice silver label there. Now there is one album there's only one album over the years that i'm the most familiar with seeing out there and that's that uh oh man i totally drew the blank it's from 1990 the bad girl gone or something like that it's got the girl on all fours it's a very provocative cover um that's the one that i hear everybody talking about the most that's the one that got them on my radar years ago that's the one i never see in the wild i keep seeing their earlier stuff so I went ahead and grabbed this. Now, of course, I am wanting to go back and try to find what store was it I saw their first album at because this is their second, third, and fourth album. I guess being the completest idea, I should get there first. I just can't remember where I saw it and where I passed it up at. But I want to go track that down. This one is very, like I said, very hard rocking and thing. Now, here's the funny thing I thought about this one that caught my eye immediately is the back cover. Black and white photo with red printing. So I don't know if this immediately brings anything to mind for you, but for me, it immediately brought two albums to mind. The first Rad EP. It's a little darker. This is a slightly darker, but still same thing. Black and white. It's, it's even got this, it's just got the same feel. The filters are using with red, but it also screams and that's a 1983 album. So Rat did it in 83. Legs Diamond did it in 84. Armored Saint did it in 83 also. So two 1983 albums that I think design-wise, photograph-wise, filter-wise are very similar. Black and white photo with red. This is the EP from the early days. This is the first time I ever had by them. Great stuff. This is a reprint. but Oh, and he, he had an OG copy of this album there, which I was real tempted to buy only because, you know, I'm leaning more towards OG better than represses. Um, but again, I had already spent some money with the previous orders, purchases that were, you know, was a little out of my price range desire um, from what I had. But yeah, he had a, a copy. This had some ring wear 
but looked like it was in great condition. I sh probably should have got it. But anyway, so I just thought, and I don't know, same photographer. I don't know. I didn't look into it that far. Was it just a thing to do? These guys did it in 83. Armored Saint and Rat did it in 83. So these guys are like, hey, maybe it'll work for us in 84. Novel little thing. I just, when I saw that cover, I immediately thought, what the heck? Are these guys trying to be Armored Saint or Rat? And the Rat EP even has a silver inner circle, like the Legs Diamond has a silver black inner circle. I don't know. Coincidence. Coincidence? I don't know. Are these two labels Target and Time Coast Records, are they related? Hmm, I don't know. Plus another coincidence between these is this is a, this Likes Diamond album, you know, like a, uh, is a six song EP with the silver line. This Rat is a six song EP with the silver label. This Armored Saint is a four song EP. I don't recall the original label. I don't have the original, but anyway. I don't know. A lot of coincidences there. Weird stuff. Um, so yeah, I thought, and, and sound wise, I mean, you know, Rat and Armored Saint are totally different sounds, even from each other. And these guys likewise, uh, but the three of them, you know, sound very, very eighties, great sound of stuff. So there you go. Now I did, um, they had an album there. This is what really stinks at the DC LaCroix band, the female fronted band from the eighties. They had a couple albums out of Medusa records and I showed one not too terribly long ago. I should have pulled it that uh, Red had sent me for VCLT. It's a little warped, but it plays fine. Well, they had both of the albums by that band at this store. And so that kind of got me excited. They had the one that I've already got and it was perfectly flat. And then they had the other one, which I'm totally drawing a blank on. It's got the more pinkish cover. And I was gonna get that. I'm like, I need that album. And I was real tempted to get the other one just because it was a non-warped version, but I'm like, ah, it was a little more pricey. I'm like, I don't need it because I got one even though it's warped. And I pulled the album out of the sleeve and it literally had this big shattered chunk out of the corner. And I held it up to the guy and I said, um, letting you know that. Oh my gosh. He said that he assumed somebody must have dropped it because the pieces were still in the plastic bag. And he obviously thinks he didn't buy it that way. So he said somebody in viewing it must have dropped it and it shattered. It was a big jagged piece. I like some almost like they took a bite out of it. So sadly, I could not get that one. That would have been really good for my collection. But if it would have been the other one, you know, sad, but I already had that album. So anyway, so I did walk out without that. Um, the other stuff I got, I, I got a jazz album in the, in the $2 bin, $3 bin, $5 bin. I don't know. Some other stuff that's not really necessary to show, just some whole fillers. But that's it for this good stuff there. And I will be planning on going back to this store because I'm telling you, you had a lot of great stuff, even though some of it was way out of my price range. It just shows he does a lot of online auction buying and stuff, so he's always getting new content in. And I'll be excited to go back there periodically. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.